Welcome to this presentation. We'll be looking at what is linguistics and how is linguistics used. To begin with then, what is linguistics? Linguistics is a systematic study of language, an attempt to scientifically study language. Not just only particular languages like English or Swedish, but human communication in all of its many different forms. So linguistics, språk, vetenskap, is the systematic study of language. And linguists, uh, we ask and try to answer some of these kinds of questions. For example, what is language and how is language organized? How do we go about analyzing language. Um, if we need to look at language then we have to have units in which we uh, units of analysis so that we can find out more about what we're looking for. It's uh, linguistics is also about for example in our minds where is language stored? How is it processed in the brain? How is it that we learn languages? A first language a second language. Linguists also try to look at what all languages have in common as well. So we try to find language universals. We also look at non-vocal systems. There's a, a writing for example and sign language. And what do these different kinds of language have in common and how do they differ? How did language originate? How did it all begin? And what does uh, human language have in common or uh, differences with animal communication? In what sense is human language different? More questions that we ask is, uh, for example, how many distinct families of languages are there or how many languages per se are there 6,000, as some people would say. If so, did they all originate from one single language or from many different sources around the world? And how have these languages changed? What creates language change? Why does language change? And what about accents, dialects, social variation? What does this tell us about how we use language? Does the way our society is made up, or the way it's politically organized, or our education system, does this affect the kind of language that we use, you use, our pupils use? And what is the relationship between what we say and our culture, our language and our culture, and also our language and thought? So, for example, can we read anything into the fact that uh, Swedish has certain words that English doesn't have? Lagom, varsågod. Swedish doesn't have please. Can this be read into culture in any particular way? Here are some of the tools and the branches of linguistics if we look at it as a whole. The smallest is uh, ph uh, phonetics and phonology. This is the area of sound. A good way to envisage all of this is imagine this to be like a cone. So this is this diagram looks like this with a side view. And phonetics and phonology are the smallest. And I see in my diagram that I've missed one here. You also have morphology here in the next layer and then syntax and semantics and pragmatics. You learn in a, a later video tutorial what these different things are. Just very briefly, phonology, phonology and phonetics, that's a study of sound and sound patterns. Morphology is a study of the small units of meaning and parts of, parts of words. Syntax is about words in order. Semantics is about word meaning 
and pragmatics is about meaning but in relation to the context in which you say it. So all of these things here, all of these circles here, they all they're how linguists dissect, analyze language in order to study it. And then, once that's done, then you can apply this knowledge in areas of sociolinguistics to see how uh, language and, uh, and society and the effects of that. Psycholinguistics is about language and the mind. Applied linguistics, this has to do with things like um, the study of how we learn first and second languages or how, ling how if we study certain kinds of texts uh, then we, we we apply our linguistic knowledge. Then we have compu computational linguistics, artificial intelligence. This is like uh, speaking computers, um, uh, autom automated translation, which is a goal that uh, some linguists have. Stylistics: how we can compare the works of Ernest Hemingway uh, to Zadie Smith, to and can we see similarities or differences in the way people write? We have philosophical linguistics here, and this is like, uh, does language determine the way we think, for example? And then we have anthropological linguistics, and this is to do with um, how societies culturally are geared up and the effect that it has on language. And this is the same thing except it's in writing applied linguistics. So uh, this documents in words the, the diagram which we had just looked at. And applied linguistics looks at these areas, language learning, um, social work, speech pathology. Dialectology is an area of linguistics where we look at regional variations of language. Ethnolinguistics or anthropological linguistics where we look at the connection between people's language and culture. There are more branches, historical linguistics, where we look at how languages are changed over time. Morphology, as I mentioned earlier, and the study of word formation. Neurolinguistics, it's a study of where language is located in the brain. By the way, I'm going to back up here. Morphology is not really a branch, but it's an essential part of uh, the tools of linguistics. Paralinguistics, this is a study of non-verbal human communication. It could be, for example, sign language. Uh, philology is a study of how language has been used in literature, especially in older manuscripts. Um, in, in effect, this is, um, uh, I suppose, very similar to historical linguistics there. There are more branches. Um, Phonetics and phonology, these are essential core elements of linguistics, but we use them to study how people use speech in different ways. And I mentioned pragmatics is a study of um, how we uh, use language in a particular context. We'll be looking at these things more in detail as our course continues. Second language acquisition, sociolinguistics, semantics, syntax. So, how is then linguistics applied? Well, many students find linguistics useful, and I hope interesting as well. And why? Because it broadens and deepens uh, understanding of other related fields, for example, languages and literature, social sciences, anthropology, education. And by having an awareness of linguistics, then if you're uh, a teacher-to-be, you'll be able to apply some of this knowledge to see, for example, uh, how does language vary between uh, boys and girls in class? Um, how does language use vary in terms of uh, people from different social backgrounds? With these tools you'll be able to analyze certain kind of texts. For example, some pupils have difficulty with maths, um, but the difficulty often lies with the language involved with studying maths. If we can help our students with this language, can we therefore help them also with their maths? So linguistics is a fascinating area and I hope that uh, 
you will also think this is the case once you have finished this course.